In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The dominion mandate is inside. That's why the Bible says, Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Confer the blessing of your life today. Yeah. I confer your mighty hand of blessing upon their lives. Yeah. Welcome to Expand Your World with Pastor David Ogwili. Let me share a few things with us about the spirit within because the failures of today's Christianity is a lot from that side and then of course we also have from the other side the holy spirit has a dual work in the life of the believer and the life of a minister in the life of the church one is where he comes to indwell us i recommend this book the spirit within and the spirit upon by kenny hagen everybody you need to read the book some of the things i'll share you can find here some of them you won't but um uh, papa hagen did a tremendous job i i actually think this might be one of the best work he has done on the subject of the holy spirit because this is at the time he was ready to exit so if all the core lessons he have le he has learned over the years um you know, because as you grow, you, as you grow, you grow in revelation, you mature. Things you thought you knew, they become clearer and, and all of that. Please show that scripture. I, I, and I hope somebody will come and teach us the 12 ministry of the Holy Spirit within the believer. I wish I have the time to look at that. That should have been the right place to start. The 12 things the Holy Spirit actually does. The spirit within, in the believer. And a study of the book of John uh, from chapter 14, 15, and 16 will give a large chunk of the information. What the, Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Most of those teachings, actually almost all of them are about the Spirit within. So if you can take a study of that and list out the functions that the Holy Spirit does, you will get an understanding of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the believer just one or two statements that I had to do with the spirit of Paul Jesus started in chapter 16 by telling them that it's expedient that I go away he said if I go not then the comforter will not come but if I go then I will send him to you um, you can imagine when a pastor wants to leave a church and the people love him everybody is sad everybody is crying and then think about when your father and mother want to die and they are telling you talking nobody wants to hear about departure about death and he's talking to them and they were very sad and sorrowful it's different from making a trip that will see you very soon this one is that you're going and then he started explaining that it's very important, very expedient. If you read it in a Amplified, he said, it's very beneficial to you that I go. The reason is, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. You will have me, but you won't have him. And if he doesn't come, this huge gap between you and me in ministry, between you and me in life will remain. There was a huge gap between the life of Jesus and the life of those ones. Jesus had the divine nature. They didn't. They were not born again. It was later, after he rose from the dead, that they experienced the new birth. None of the disciples that walked with him for three years had the experience of new birth. So, John chapter 5, 26 said, As the Father had life in himself, he gave to the Son to have. But the disciples didn't have that life. 
the kind of life the almighty god has is what jesus had in him while he was on earth the disciples didn't until the cross today that life is in you and i you have the same life as jesus as the father had life in himself he gave to the son to have life I used to have problem with this many years ago. I say, I know the Father has it. Jesus had it. I'm the only one that I know I don't. And you're not going to have the faith to do mighty work till you know your identity in Christ. So I used to have problem with, you know, I'm not yet there. No. You are born into that family. And the first thing is that this DNA, this nature of God has been given to you. So 1 John 5, 11, you will see it. He has been in the heavenly father. Now you find it in Jesus. In 1 John 5, 7, he said, this is the record, this is the testimony that God has given us life. And if you go and check the Greek, all of them are Zoe. As the father had Zoe, so had he given to the son to have Zoe. And now in 1 John 5, 11, he said, this is the record that God has given us Zoe. Zoe simply means the God kind of life, the nature of God. It's in every believer. If you don't have it, you're not genuinely saved. You're not born again. You got a religion or joined a church. This is the record that God has given us life. That life is in his son, Jesus, which we just read in John 5. Jesus had it. But now, here is the next line. Whosoever has the son has that life. Anybody that has received Christ actually has received the divine nature. The Bible actually proved it in the Peter was the one that was writing, saying that we are partakers of the divine nature. So the impartation of this life was done by the Holy Spirit. It's it was the Holy Spirit that did that job. The blood dealt with your sin. The blood did a lot of things. The blood also made it possible for the Holy Spirit to come, to be given to us. You know, if you listen to PCJ during the camp meeting, teaching on the cross, there is a, a scripture he dealt with at, at a particular stage about the cause of the law. Galatians 3, verse 13. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. So when Jesus was crucified on the cross, he was made a cause for us. The way he redeemed us is by being made a cause for us. So that the blessing of Abraham will come upon the Gentiles. But have you ever read the next line? If you read it, it's verse 14. 13 said he has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. 14 said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Look at the next one. That we might receive what? The promise of the Holy Spirit. So the cross paid the price so that the Holy Spirit can now come to endure human beings. The blood cleans the, the temple, now the Holy Spirit endures it. That's why you can't have Pentecost before Calvary. You can't have that. You can't have the Holy Spirit come where the blood has not cleansed. But the blood was not the one that, you know, <laughs> the blood paid for everything. But the actual working out of what Christ died for is done by the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example. He was teaching on, on the subject of healing. That through the stripes of Christ, you are healed. So healing is paid for by the cross and is now your property. But the truth is, if you get sick now, what actually manifests the healing in your body is the Holy Spirit. So in understanding the gospel, you have to understand there are two sides to grace. That's why the teaching of grace in Nigeria is lopsided. That's why they are creating problems. What they talk about is redemptive grace. The one that forgives you, that cleans, that uh, cancelled all your sins. It doesn't matter what you have done. There is another side, which is the enabling grace that now makes what you have been claiming become real. Redemptive grace said he was made sin. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. But enabling grace is the one that came to enable us to actually walk in righteousness. To walk in holiness. It's called the sanctification of the spirit. 
If not, you will be confessing that you are made righteous. Meanwhile, you are living like a pig. So, these are part of the work of the Holy Spirit within. To learn to harness his ministry. And anybody that truly discovers that and begins to walk in it, start living godly. Start living victorious Christian life. That's why I'm going to try to do some work here. And I'm going to come back. Because this thing require, can take the whole conference. And those who have not been taught the life of the Spirit can carry an anointing, but they will be gallant failures. Because that anointing of porn only works for others. Do you know that when a believer is sick, he is not healed by the anointing he carries, even if he has a healing ministry. What he heals the believer is the anointing within. If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, not stay on you, he shall what? Quicken your mortal body. Is the well that heals you. The river is to flow to others. And you now can see a lot of people so, can even healing people, but they are sick. The issue. That's why I'm not stepping up because there is a lot to bring to the knowledge of God's people in this area. And you will see Christians just living victorious and without struggle. To start with, the life we are called to live is not a life of struggle. It is li live by the Spirit. There is something called walking in the Spirit. It is not flowing in anointing. It is walking in godliness. Walking in love. Walking in faithfulness. Just, just being like Jesus. And that is without struggle. Walking in holiness. Walking in integrity. Walking in humility. That's what walking in the spirit is. Living that changed life. That transformed life. And it's done by the power of the spirit within. That's actually what the Holy Spirit came to do. Empower you to live exactly like Jesus. So, Jesus was telling them, if I don't go, this huge gap between the way, look at some of you, you still fight. Me, I'm willing to lay down my life. You can't even lay your life down for others. You're still selfish. This gap between you and I will not be narrowed. If it comes inside you now, he will reproduce in you what you see in me. Then number two, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come upon you. And if it doesn't come, this gap you see between my ministry and your ministry, why is it that the other time you guys were asked to cast out devils, you wasted the whole day, you couldn't? I spoke one word, the devil left. The reason is that when Jesus spoke to that devil and he came out, it was the gift of faith that was in oppression. The gift of faith is what elevates a man to where his words are as powerful and creative as God Almighty's words. Actually, it's that faith God used to create the world. Not normal faith. It's not this one that comes by preaching and hearing the word. That's the normal believer's faith. You can't turn water to wine with that. You cannot divide the rest with that. When you see the prophet speak, and then you go home, is done to you according to your word. They are not talking by normal faith, which a believer is trying, to, struggling to be, use to receive answer to prayer. They are talking by the supernatural faith. All the nine, all the gifts of the Spirit manifested in the Old Testament except tongues and interpretation. So there were seven gifts. That's what those men were talking about. When Elijah came and said, there will be no rain but by my word. That's the gift of faith. You can differentiate the gift of faith from working on miracle because the gift of faith declares and it happens. The working on miracle initiates an action. When Moses took the rod and stretched over the sea to divide it, that's working on miracle. 
But if he didn't do that and he only spoke and the seed divided, that's the gift of faith. When Elijah said, let the sun and the moon stand still, that's the gift of faith. It's something. It comes inside you. I saw you cross into that while you were preaching. Yes. When you started preaching, you started with normal faith like every other believer. As you preach, preach somewhere along the line, it came in. And you were declaring some things. In coming to yes. When you finish, because he only functions when you are in the spirit, when you are under the anointing. When he finishes, you drop back to normal faith, which if you don't read the word, you won't have faith. You'll be doubting. You see the same man that called fire down, running away from Jezebel. Why don't you consume Jezebel with your mind? He has climbed down from the unction. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? When Jesus spat on clay and made mud, put on a, a man that was born blind, probably didn't even have eyes, put clay on his eyes. He was doing what God did at creation. That is walking of what? He said, go wash your eyes, you will come back seeing. That's walking of miracles. The man went to the water, wash, and his new eyes came in there. That's, he just made mud. The way God created eyes with mud, and the create and eyes were created but if a group of blind men were crying to him have mercy on us son of them and he said receive your sight that's gift of faith so you should know when that faith of god comes into your soul Decla anything you declare by the inspiration of the holy ghost happens anything by the spirit because when that thing comes it comes for certain things it might come for legs it might come for finances it might come for barrenness don't waste that moment don't you know some of you like i told you don't go back to who you used to be certain things have fallen on you this morning now for example don't go back you just need teaching now to be shown the operations how they work don't go back for example you might be in the middle of a teacher you might be in the middle of a summer don't just stay there that cold teacher and just keep teaching especially those of you who, are, who talk too much don't stay there and be pontificating on the pulpit. Halfway you are missing. That thing enters your spirit. And he enters. It might be in line with what you are saying. God just gave you the gift of faith so he can confirm the word you are preaching. Declare those things. You see, there is a difference between teaching and... Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That week, miracles will be happening like water. Starting in that service. Most of the miracles of provision in the Bible were by the gift of faith. Actually, the gift of faith did 80%. Working on miracles did about 20%. Like water turning to wine. What was that? No, it's no gift of faith. It's working of... That's why he asked them, fill the pots with... Then go back and fetch it. That's working on miracle. There is some set of spirit-inspired action. That you take and a miracle is the result. In the gift of faith, you don't do anything. God does it in response to that. In the gift of faith, God does it. In working on miracle, you play a part. I don't think you heard me well. I'm going to give you two examples and show them the scripture. Acts chapter 3, where Peter said to the crippled man, Silver and gold have I known, such as I have given unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and... If the crippled man got up walking, what would that be? The gift of faith, because it's your declaration and God performs. Like you see where Jesus said, rise up, take up your bed and go home. That's the gift of faith. The person will get up. But obviously, this one didn't get up. So, he added another dimension, which is verse 7. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately, it was when he did this action that his ankle 
bones and his feet received strength and he began to leap and he stood and walked and entered into the temple so what is this gift of faith or walking on miracle this is walking on miracle but i can also tell you it's possible that both the gift of faith and walking on miracle were operating together because many a time the gifts are working in clusters okay go to where paul was preaching at lystra and there was a crippled man there and the man was listening to paul preach that's why i listen my friends listen my friend never preach a negative sermon again you are undermining the gospel preach the gospel the gospel is a has power it's like a dynamo as you preach it it's like holding electricity it charges you you can go on the pulpit weak you can go on the pulpit you don't even know what you're going to do but don't worry Ask the Holy Spirit to open, uh, touch your tongue and ignite you with auction. Ask him to give you utterance. As you begin to preach the gospel, if you're preaching and the power is not being activated, you are preaching unbelief. You're not preaching the gospel. Did you see what he was preaching in committing? Then as you preach, halfway, that electricity will catch a hold of you. And when it catches a hold of you, it moves you into the spirit. And when he moves you into the spirit, this is there are seven laws for activating the anointing. This is one of them the preaching of the gospel. Get the message right, and the anointing will always be in the meeting. Get your message wrong, and you kill the Holy Spirit out of the meeting. Some of you like to use your puppet to condemn people, to put people down. You will not have anointing in your church. In that church, people will be living instead of growing have the holy ghost in your church that church will multiply more in one month than you used to do in one year the gospel is the power of god unto salvation is one of the laws for activation because what happened is that the lord walking with them mark chapter 16 verse 20 confirming the word with signs following once you start preaching the power that backs the gospel the power in the gospel is activated and that's the holy spirit he is the person that backs the gospel that's why he was given to make it potent that's why i said i wish there's time to look at his 12 ministries maybe somebody should endeavor to teach that so there sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb so the one peter dealt with was born crippled this one was born crippled who had never walked you know a person like that a grown-up man it has to be a miracle if he ever walks but what happened verse the next verse the same head paul speaking steadfast beholding him perceiving that he had faith to be healed the gift of faith has stepped into the service but it was activated through what paul was preaching if he was preaching on belief and putting people down that man wouldn't have been helped not even in a million years many of you at once killing your services you quench the holy spirit by what is coming out from your pulpit He heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So there were two gifts working here. One is word of knowledge that enabled Paul to know that the faith of God has been activated in the soul of this man. When he talked about perception, is word of knowledge. The second gift that was working here is the gift of faith, where he perceived. So he said, with a loud voice stand upright on your feet he didn't even add the name of jesus and the man leaped and began to walk no touching him no pushing anything just stand up because it's the same power with which god created the universe he spoke creation into being when the gift of faith comes into your spirit god just gives serenity there's this peace this assurance inside you this knowing that's when some people say, if the devil shows up here, I will tear him in pieces. Meet that man maybe one week after. He's, he say, if the devil will show up in this, I will just tear him. The gift of faith is what he's saying. So, 
It gives you a knowing. An inward assurance. My Lord, the Holy Ghost is taking over my service. So, Because we're in spirit upon, instead of being in spirit within. It looks like many are hungry to hear some of these things. At that moment, that inspiration in your spirit, anything you declare alongside with it happens. Many of you have experienced this because probably lack of knowledge of how it works, you did not utilize it. You miss major moments for miracles. All those people broke in the church. Their destiny, financial destiny, could have been turned around by one word, by a few declarations under the operation of the gift of faith. Because it functions in me mightly, there is this an, an anointing that has been cast. Ain't nobody can be under this mandate and not have a, a not partake of it. We have in the same spirit of faith. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. We also believe, therefore, we speak. There is a spirit of faith. It doesn't come necessarily by faith, come by hearing, hearing. No, it's imparted by the Holy Ghost to the Spirit. Sometimes in prayer meeting, people are praying and interceding so well online, the thing hits. Hey! That's when to turn prayer meeting into miracle service. All the barren worms, clear them. But take note, take note. Take note, because it's the Holy Spirit, anytime he brings it, he inspires within your spirit what it is for. Just speak in line with that. As you do that, there might be other things that he will bring as you start. Because it's like a tap. Once the first water drops, it starts running. It might bring other things along. But if you ignore what he's inspiring you for, and want to now do other things, he will lift. I'm teaching operations now. You see, spiritual gift has three sides. <laughs> hey, Lord, what is going on? Okay. Spiritual gift has three sides. The, the it basic is manifestation. We just experienced some manifestation. What I was talking about, spirits of just men. Yeah. Even now, I'm under a manifestation. Because, <laughs> you see, when I, I'm ministering under the anointing, I minister with a combination of spiritual gifts. Sometimes I'm ministering with the spirit of prophecy. That's the one that takes a service out of this world into another realm. If you want electrifying services, it's the spirit of prophecy. I, there's a tape, go and get that tape. Sometimes I'm ministering. As I'm teaching, but I'm ministering along with the word of knowledge. There are times I'm teaching, I'm even ministering along with the word of wisdom. And I'm saying what I'm saying, and people think I'm just asserting them. They don't know I'm. That's why, depending on the gifts functioning in your life, the power of your preaching or your teaching or your pulpit ministry. The power of the pulpit varies depending on what the man behind it is carrying. Even if you give them the same verse, John 3.16. Give another one, John 3.16. It's not the verse. It's what is behind it. The gifts of the Spirit has manifestations. That's when it's activated. It's manifest. But there are oppressions. Operations are dynamics. How they function. How do they function? So after you learn about it, learn how they function. How does word of knowledge function? And then there are administration. How do you control it? How do you govern it so that it doesn't get out of control? So it remains a blessing. Like some of the guidelines he was writing in chapter 14 about tongues. How to use the gift so that you bless people and not harm people because like a gun is a weapon you can destroy lives with it 
You can come on the pulpit and start exposing. And you think God gave you a spiritual gift so you can expose people in the public. And you grieve the Holy Spirit because that's not what he came here to do. It's because you lack sense. A doctor keeps people's confidentialities. So if God is going to start revealing people's private things to you, the first law is the law of confidentiality. It's to you to use that information to help them, not to disgrace them, not to expose them. Some people now get up and think they gave them gift of prophecy or whatever so they can be exposing everybody. There are people, God, start giving certain things so they can intercede. Then they turn their ministry into gossip. What is the problem? They might have the oppression, but they don't have the administration. The proper order for administering the gift. For example, somebody is giving a prophecy now, but somebody else is giving a message. And as he's standing and he's saying, Thus said the Lord, or he's speaking in tongues and bringing the word, another person get up at the back and start making noise. Now, that means Holy Spirit is disturbing himself. That means God is causing confusion. But that's not true. It's the human being. He lacks the administration. The administration said, let it be done in order. The administration said, even while you are functioning, stay under authority. But some, they get that annoyed. They think they have become bigger than their pastor. The administration said, when God says you, you stay in the body, you are part of the body. He said, the glory I have given you, you have given me, I am giving them that they might be one. I'm not giving you the glory so you can fragment my body. I'm giving you the glory so you can unite the body. Stay in the body. Submit yourself to authority. These are about administrations. As a woman, stay under authority. Put a covering over your head. Respect your husband. God might be using you in a way he's not using him in church. Maybe you are the pastor's wife and then you have gone, you go colo. You go mad. Nobody can talk to you again at home. And then you end up with leprosy and affliction. Something will just go wrong with you. You just carry your mess and be walking up and down. We're walking around spiritually naked. Evil spirit can dictate and shoot. Go back to Paul in Lystra. <laughs> you see the gift of faith in oppression. So, for Peter, there was walking on miracle. Because there are a set of walking on miracle that has to do with healing. Things that are not normal. Ordinary healing will not do. That gift is what we... Like broken bones. All kinds of things. I've had God feed people's teeth. One time would even go with it. That's those, those crazy things. It's beyond healing. Because healing is repair, restoration. This one is creation. What kind of miracle creates? And the gift of faith can unlock miracles. You see, both the gift of faith and working on miracle can achieve the same thing, but through the two different ways. One accomplishes it passively because it doesn't do any action. God does all the action. But what it does is to speak that thing into being. To call that thing that be not into being. You know, sometimes you're preaching on finance and the thing hits you. I've, I watch you a couple of times, even once in Canada, even in the US. Ha! Even somebody that is sleeping under the bridge can have his life turned around in 24 hours by that gift. But after he leaves, that's why we teach people. When this, the water boils, you know, in Jerusalem, there was a pool up beside her. An angel will come at a certain time and trouble the water. That, the water starts boiling. That's the anointing on the water. Anybody that jumps in is here. When the thing boils, plug in. You know what some people will do? When that minister has finished, he's back to normal faith. They now carry their head, they can come to him. What he can do is to pray with you in agreement by faith. If you believe, you will get. God will answer you. But it's no more the anointing in operation. It's not the gifts of the Spirit in operation. It's just two believers trusting God for so something to happen. It's a different thing. Mm. 
That's why there are some people, certain services that will change their life, they won't be present. Then when the anointing finishes and it's gone, the Holy Ghost, and then they come to meet us with ordinary faith. You pray for them. If it's somebody that has sense, who knows that this man is an anointed man, even though the thing has gone, the, that Holy Ghost is still that he can be activated. He comes with honor. Because that's what happened. Honor activation. You want the other man to be the one blessing you, not the natural man. I don't think you heard what I said. He said the spirit of God shall come upon you and he shall turn you into what? Another man. That another man is who you want pronouncing. Give me venison that my soul may bless you. Not that my body or my intellect will bless you. He wants that mantle of Abraham that he carries to be activated. Honor activates it. Worship activates, activates it. When Elisha found himself low because he was angry with Ahab's son, he said, go to the prophet of your father and your mother. Go to those prophets of Jezebel, the prophets of Baal. Why are you coming to me for help? He said, if not that I respect Jehoshaphat, who is a good man, I won't even come out to see you. You see, this is a prophet of God, but this is an evil king coming to a man of God to get help. Because he has war. You know, like politicians. See, the only reason I came out is that I respect this one. I wonder what he's doing, being your friend. And after scolding and saying, of course, you are in the flesh. You are just manifesting an anger and emotion. When he finished, okay, now Jehoshaphat is here. He can't leave them. He has to help them. He now said, bring me a minstrel. You see, activation. What we are talking about. Because I don't know, we have so much to talk about. And I don't know whether anybody will discuss this subject. There are laws of activation. There are about seven. You see activation. When you don't, there is no anointing on you. But there is a big problem. They, they just carry somebody sick into your office. They just carry it. And the situation you see, you know you need more than just normal faith, just to pray, believe God. You need to step up. He said, bring me a minister. Bring me change. Bring me Pastor Jerry. Not everybody who plays keyboard is a minstrel. How you know is who, when the man plays, does the Holy Spirit respond? There are some when they are playing, the Holy Spirit runs away. I've watched him for many good days. I don't know what it is that God gave him. When he puts his hand on that thing, like David, even if you are mad like Saul, your madness will clear. How can they give you that thing and you're using half eye when you have there are seven eyes that a believer is supposed to have. They are called the seven spirits of God. A chin should become a minister. But there is a Benihin in this man. There is a, a Jimmy Swagger in him. He shouldn't just go and be teaching dry word. He should sit down and bless the people. After they've done praise and worship, thank God for their own. You sit down. They put mic. When you finish releasing, then you create heaven on earth. Then you step up on that and open the world. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That church will so grow. Some of you, when you sing, you stay with singing. After being a service, you need to move on to being a king like David. After being a service, you need to move on to being a priest. Because the psalmist the anointing is a gateway to the prophetic. You prophesy with psalms. You prophesy with hymns. You prophesy with... You sing the one you learned and rehearse. You, you step up and sing what you never heard of. Whatever. If you have anything to do with music, anything to do with psalmistry, you don't have to be a musician. No. Just lift up your hands. There is an, a prophetic anointing that downloads songs. There is a prophetic anointing that opens the portals of heaven. That give access. Agibo go kobolo dia paimomo kondioros piandoros 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 piando. Hey 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 hey! Abus abus. Freeze, 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 
Yeah. Is that thing that downloads songs, that download movies, that download poems, that download pictures, that download Kiatapa, Kiatapa, Kiatapa Supers. The Samishri anointing is a prophetic anointing. You can't have it and not prophesy. And you just stop with just singing. You have wasted a tremendous gift. You have limited a tremendous... You, if you have it, you can open blind eyes. If you have it, you can get cripples to walk. If you have it, you can change your world. It's different if you are just singing without the anointing. That's why a person that pays the price to have it cannot become secular. Because that is devotion. Is the emotion in the spirit? You need to step it forward. Show them this scripture. There is oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man wasted it. Some people are carrying oil, but are wasting it. There is treasure to be desired. Other people are desiring, crying for it oil that treasure is oil in the dwelling of the wise but a foolish man wasted just squanders it doesn't know what it is yet he can change not only his life but his village he, he can change all this cry god where is the money where is the money the money is in the anointing you see what i'm telling you there is ministration of the spirit. I don't know why it's not allowing me yet. I need to teach. I want to get back to teach. <laughs> Go and run those services that are electrified. I think we still have two days. There are things God is going to show us here. There are things. No normal ministry will exist here again. You're not a lecturer. You are a man of God. You have God's oracles in your mouth. Pulpit is not for pontification. It's for unveiling God's oracles. You are my strength when I am weak. You are that treasure that I see. You are my only Seeking you as a precious jewel. Learn to give up a fool. You are my own. Jesus, Lamb of God, what is your name? Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. 